Atmachaitanyamashritya Dehendriya Manodhya Svakriyarte Shuvartante Surya Lokang Yatajana Atmachaitanyang Vitality of Consciousness Ashritya Depending upon Deha Indriya Manodhyaha Body, Senses, Mind and Intellect Svakriya Arteshu In their respective activities Vartante Engage Surya Lokang Sunlight Yata Just as Jana People Depending upon the energy or vitality of Atma Chaitanya, consciousness, the body, senses, mind, and intellect engage themselves in their respective activities, just as people work depending upon sunlight. Namaste. So this verse is very interesting because it illustrates something that we don't think about a lot. We tend to take everything for granted. If it's steady, you know, if it seems like it's going to be predictably uh, reliable, we tend to take it for granted. Like we take it for granted that the sun is going to come up every morning. What if it didn't? We'd be in trouble, huh? So this is because we depend on the sun to do our work. This is why Brahman is compared with the sun. In fact, it's worshipped in the form of the sun. The sun is one of the deities, the Vedic traditional deities. Fire is another one. And these are because they act in a similar way. They have a similarity of action to the self. And they have the similarity that we depend on them. Without fire, without the sun, who could live? So, in this way, Brahman becomes taken for granted. We don't think about it. But we utilize it and we depend upon it for everything, absolutely everything. What would happen if we're not conscious we couldn't do anything, isn't it? Like, to do our work, we have to wake up in the morning. We have to be in Jagrat consciousness. And we just assume that's going to happen. We expect it. It seems natural. What does that mean? <laughs> it's dependable, predictable, fundamental. And you can base other things on on it, reliably. So in this way, consciousness, although it is the root and the cause and the foundation and the substrate of absolutely everything, becomes taken for granted such that we don't even notice it. But if you check, if you go and look, you will find consciousness is always there. If you can remember in a dream, if you can do lucid dreaming, remember and look, and you'll see that consciousness is there. Even if you can remember in sushupti, deep sleep, for example, during meditation, to look and check and see consciousness is there. It may not have any object, <laughs> but it's still there. But then when we reach Turiya, we become consciousness itself. So, or actually, we always were all along, but we were hallucinating these different objects. <laughs> Just like AIs, you know? You ask it something, oh, when was uh, Babe Ruth playing in the Yankees, you know, and it'll give you some absurd dates, and you go check it 
with Wikipedia and you find out it's wrong. This happens all the time, right? Artificial intelligence, well, even our so-called real intelligence behaves like that. It gives us stories that we like to hear based on our projections, on our upadis, on our superimposition. So the whole story of I and mine is concocted by this algorithm that runs in the root level of the brain called the mula pariyaya, the root sequence. And what it does is it processes every sense perception that comes in through the senses and adds tags to it. Huh? This is mine. This is I. Huh? This is me. This is my work. This is my this. This is my that. And then we try to enjoy it based on the assumption that it's mine. We do this with consciousness all the time. Well, we do it subconsciously. In other words, it's such a habit that we're no longer consciously aware of it. So <laughs> what is the cure for this? Become consciously aware of it. Just look at it. Uh, it's embarrassing, isn't it? It's awkward. It's sort of like, no, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> I am doing that? Me, the great I? <laughs> because it's dumb. It's dumb to, how, I mean, how many of you have had a crush? Probably all of us, right? When we were in grade school or high school, somebody in the environment, somebody that just shows up, you know, uh, we or something within us selects it as an object of affection and projects this whole trip on it, you know, hit on her or him or whoever, that uh, this is the perfect mate, this is the perfect companion, and so on. So <laughs> we get a crush on this person. She may not even know. They may not even realize, you know. It could be this unrequited love from afar. <laughs> But what it is, is imposition, superimposition, super duper imposition, <laughs> an emotional identification with an object like the rope of the snake. The so called, the, the real object, you know, the other person that I have a crush on is the substrate. And my crush, my whole imagined love affair with them is the projection, the overlay, the superimposition. So in this way, we go on through life, you know, and as each one of these superimpositions is shown to be false, huh, we finally get the courage to go up to our crush and, and talk to her. And she's going like, who are you? <laughs> we get our bubble busted. All the time. But what does the mind do? The mind has a whole queue of reserve objects. So what will happen is you'll grieve for a while, a longer or shorter period of time, over the busted bubble, and then the mind will come up with another one, and off you go. Well, the next passion, the next imaginary overlay that you project on reality. <laughs> this is the mind. And if you observe it, I'm not going to say that you fight with it or stop it, because that will just make it worse. But simply observe it. And then how can this behavior continue? You know, how can it go on in the presence of awareness? It can't. So it'll gradually stop. But, of course, the price of freedom, the price of liberation is eternal vigilance. So you have to remain aware so that the same old habit does not recur. 
So what we're saying here is that a person's quality of life, their quality of work, action, activity, and so on, is completely dependent on the quality of their consciousness. What do I mean by quality of consciousness? That they have full function and discretion over the full range of the four states of consciousness. Mastery of consciousness, to put it in another way, that one can, to a certain extent, control, but more than that, be aware of what states of consciousness one is in, what senses are being used, uh, what upadis are engaged, and so on. You know, just like a general global high-level awareness of one's inner life. This will naturally bring one to enlightenment. There is no other effort required Simply the knowledge of what is going on in there, plus observation, awareness, focused consciousness on the machine, huh? <laughs> the algorithms running inside, often without any conscious participation because their habits built long ago when we were still trying to create our individuality during childhood. Coping mechanisms, ways of dealing with the constant shocks of the mind failing to anticipate what is going to happen. Isn't it? So we create what Gurdjieff called a buffer. A buffer, if you've ever seen European railway cars, they have these two, like, flat plates on either side, and they're like buffers. They're spring-loaded shock absorbers. And they make the whole uh, ride of the train much smoother, much less prone to derailments and so on. But in life, we also create buffers that when times are tough, we'll distract ourselves with these different dreams that we project on reality to justify ourselves, to uh, encourage ourselves, and frankly, to compensate for our shortcomings. So this is the process of looking into the mind with insight, with compassion, self-compassion, and seeing the illusions that we live by and not trying to fight them, not trying to destroy them or anything like that, but just be aware of them and what they really are. Buddha called them papancha. It means a waterfall. And it means that one particular thought or one particular impression coming into the mind generates all these others huh? by derivation, by the algorithm, by the mula pariyaya and the other automatic processes going on in the mind, which we originally developed to enhance our survival. But, you know, survival, <laughs> what is the survival of the cause of suffering all about? But again, that's another video. Aum <laughs> Tatsat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.